So there were numerous updates improving the PS Remote Play app. This is by far the biggest change. This is going to allow you to actually play via mobile data. So your LTE, 4G, 5G, you can now play your PS4, PS5 games anywhere around the world. Now, I made countless videos discussing remote play. All it is, you can be able to play your PS5, PS4 games on your iPhone, iPad, or even Android device. Now, the first thing you have to do, you have to open up the App Store. And you will need to download the PS Remote Play app. This app is completely free. And now look, you even have dark mode available. You can increase the text sizes depending on your mobile device settings. And we're going to open it right up. So Remote Play, you're going to be presented with this. And we're going to check for the settings. Now you have mobile data support. You tap on that. Use mobile data. Notify me. You can even change the video quality for streaming. So right now it's set to standard. Low is going to be more efficient on the data. And of course, the best quality, you're going to get the best experience, but it's going to take up the most data coming in at 6.8 gigabytes per hour of streaming. Okay, so before you connect your PS5, you will need to enable it first on your PS5. So you have to take it to the settings, system, remote play, and make sure remote play is enabled. Pretty self-explanatory, very easy. I don't really use remote play. I'm home basically most of the time, so I'm always access to my PS5, but this could be very handy if you're trying to play a quick game of... I don't know, Elden Rings. If you've been watching my videos, I apologize for milking this, making the same videos, but it's just been dramatic changes left and right. Now, if it don't find a connection, it'll let you know that it can't find your PS5 or PS4. Then it's gonna ask you to take it to the settings, system, remote play, link device. And I'm actually gonna, like, and I am in. And there you guys have it. So PS5 remote play, of course, you can use, let me turn this down. Of course, you can use the controls here. Now, this is not recommended because it's not ergonomically, like, and the screen is small. Of course, you can flip it over, have it landscape. And you can pretty much play any game here. So you can play Fortnite, Ghost Runner, Black Ops, all that stuff. But the best thing is you can also pair a DualSense controller thanks to iOS now, if you want to pair up your controller, you want to take it over to the settings, go to Bluetooth, and then on your PS5 controller, you want to press and hold the create button and the PS button at the same time until it flashes. So you see that flash? It's right there. Now it's put to pair mode, and then you see it right there. And then it's connected. I remember back in the days you had to do a lot of work around just to get the controller to work on your iPhone, but now it supports it natively. Well, this is an old feature now. Okay, so we're gonna connect right back to the PS5. I may as well put this landscape, and then now we could be able to use our DualSense controller on the go. Now, I'm still connected to Wi-Fi. Come on, let me, I'm gonna turn off Wi-Fi actually. Okay, so let me turn off Wi-Fi, so that's off. And we're connected to 5G, UC, and we're gonna tap on simply PS5. We're gonna use mobile data, and we're gonna select the PS5, and boom. Okay. And hopefully it doesn't take too long to connect. This is actually pretty incredible, because prior to this, you have to have a hotspot and then from the hotspot you got to make sure you using your wi-fi on this it was a big mess but this is actually pretty compelling okay boom i see the notification on my ps5 and now it is checking the network environment and voila so right now i'm on 5g just to show you guys i'm on uh, t-mobile 5g uc Wi-Fi is disabled, and as you guys can see, there's really no latency, and really there's no delay here. So we're gonna play, we're gonna play a couple of games, and of course, the Dual Sense here still works just fine too. So you guys can see, latency is not that bad. But we're gonna play some games and put it to the ultimate test. And the best thing is, if you have a cellular iPad like I do, this is a cellular iPad Mini, you could be able to do the same thing too. But for now, we're just gonna focus on the iPhone. Just. 
still adjusting to the software. I'm in a prison. I can calibrate only your basic protocols from in here. It'll have to suffice for now. A trespasser spotted at Metro Station. This is bad. You have to fight your way out of here. to another sector. cannot be blocked so warriors learn how to dodge these blows all right so i decided to hook up my ipad so you guys can see 5g right there now i'm not sure how lte is going to perform now this is probably the only way you can really truly play fortnite on your iphone or ipad via remote play but yeah guys no no lag here man i'm very impressed Like, no lag here. This is this is incredible. So there you guys have it. That's remote play on the iPhone and on the iPad, testing out the mobile connectivity or mobile data. So 5G on the iPhone 13 using the UC versus the iPad. I was playing 5G and then I switched into LTE and it performs pretty much very similar. So come to think about it, this is basically the PSP of 2022 let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think and make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on help me reach the 200,000 subscribers we're getting so close and drop a like on this video drop a like on this video help me out tremendously until next time guys have a simple day peace